Hello, this is the History Hour podcast from the BBC World Service with me, Max Pearson, the past brought to life by those who were there. This week, feminism in the 20th century, including the leading woman in early Russian communism and the fate of British women after the First World War. You just take it for granted that you wouldn't get married. There were too many women and not enough men to go round. Also this week, a tragic case of mass poisoning in the Balkans, the world's worst ever aviation disaster, and the most notorious miscarriage of justice in British history. We waited a long time for this. 16 years because of hypocrisy and brutality. Well, that may all sound a bit like heavy going, and it's a sad fact that much of what we mark out as moments in history does tend to be bound up with the more grim aspects of life. But bear with us, because each of our stories from the past is brought vividly to life through personal recollections and recordings. And the first half of the podcast is something of a celebration, as we take time to look at some key individuals from the 20th century who blazed a trail when it comes to gender equality – In many parts of the world, granted not in all countries, huge strides have been taken over the last 100 years. The role of women in society has changed dramatically, but the earliest feminists had to fight hard for that change. And one of the most remarkable characters in this field was Alexandra Kolontai, who was the leading woman in early Russian communism. She became one of the most influential feminists of all time, even after she fell out with Lenin in March 1921 and was sidelined from mainstream Russian politics. Dina Newman has this report. In a communist society, men and women should be equal. Without gender equality, there is no communism. Alexandra Kolontai was the most prominent campaigner for women's rights in Russia's communist history. Take your place among those who fight for workers' freedom, for equality, for the happiness of your children. Female workers and peasants, take your place under the red banner of the victorious worldwide communist movement. Alexandra Kolontai saw communism as the best way to promote women's rights. A close ally of Lenin, she became the first Bolshevik minister for women's and social rights and helped to introduce some of the most progressive laws in the world on women's family and labour rights. Kolontai is, in some respects, the, the most important woman in my life. I think she was the first, the, the most real Bolshevik of the whole lot. Dora Black, later the second wife of philosopher Bertrand Russell, visited Moscow in 1920 and became friends with Kolontai. Decades later, she spoke about her to the BBC. She took me to a congress at the Bolshoi Theatre, which was in the heart of Moscow, as you know. It's a great big hall, and it was packed with women from all over the Soviet Union, most of them with kerchiefs over their heads, peasant women of various kinds, and she was speaking to them from the platform, and I stood by her side. The female worker and the female peasant is still oppressed by housework and she is still a slave in her own family. The male worker should understand that the woman is an equal member of the proletarian family. Kolontai's vision went further than many feminists of her time. She advocated sexual freedom for both men and women and her private life shocked her communist comrades. At the age of 45, she embarked on a passionate affair with sailor Pavel Debenka, 17 years her junior. Kathy Porter is Kolontai's biographer. Kolontai was an aristocrat of private means. Debenko came from a poor a peasant family in the Ukraine. It was a very uh, passionate and stormy and difficult affair. When Debenko was in serious trouble for breaking party discipline, Kolontai spent a huge amount of emotional energy and time defending him. And one perhaps might wonder if Debenko really deserved such sacrifice from her because he wasn't actually that loyal to her. He was very promiscuous and was constantly falling into other women's arms. Once, Alexandra Kolontai and Pavel Dibenka disappeared for 10 days and failed to turn up for a government meeting where they were expected. Lenin later joked that the worst punishment for them would be to force them to get married. 
Kalantai opposed marriage on principle. Debenka took full advantage of the freedom he had in their relationship. One of the problems of, of all this new sexual morality uh, was that jealousy was considered bourgeois and beneath revolutionaries, and it was a great shame because it allowed men to abuse women because men were not sufficiently educated to make use of this rather idealistic version of uh, free love that she talked about. Many men in Russia did not understand Kolontai's feminist approach and some accused her of trying to take away their wives. But her vision was to create state-run facilities to free women from back-breaking domestic work. So start working for your rights and for your liberation, comrades female workers. Build creches and children's homes, organize communal canteens, help the Communist Party to create the new bright future. She understood that the revolution didn't only have to do with power and economics, but that it had to do with the relations between men and women and parents and children and all the human things as well. Alexandra Kolontai confided in Dora about her frustration with her male party colleagues. Oh, she also said that the comrades were not paying enough attention to uh, saving children from child labour and that sort of thing, and they were pretending that the times were not ripe for a great many things that she thought ought to be done. And you see, this gave me the real in, uh, inspiration uh, of what women both could and ought to do in politics. A passionate, radical Marxist feminist, Kolontai had a vision of the communist future with no private property, no money, and where all relationships would be based on love, comradeship and equality. But in March 1921, that idealistic vision was far away from the reality of most Russians. Russia's economy was shattered after years of brutal civil war. Factories were ruined, uh, mines were wrecked, transport was not working, shops were boarded up, families were broken up, people were trekking across the country in search of their loved ones. In March 1921, sailors in a naval base outside Petrograd staged a revolt. Lenin and his Bolsheviks were worried about losing control of the country. So to kick-start the ruined economy, Lenin used the 1921 Party Congress to propose introducing some elements of the free market. The purpose of the 10th Party Congress at which Kolontai uh, disagreed with the party line so strongly, was to endorse the new economic policy. It, it was a very anguished and angry Congress. Many party members felt that introducing any elements of the free market was an insult to their Marxist principles, and Kolontai became their spokesperson. But with the economy in ruins and strikes and revolts going on across Russia, the last thing Lenin wanted was an opposition within his own party. In the next few months, Lenin broke off any contact with Kolontai, ending her political career. She spent the rest of her life as the Soviet ambassador to various Scandinavian countries. She died in 1952 in Moscow. One third of all assets in the world economy are produced by women. In our communist society, men and women have to be equal. The words of the redoubtable Alexandra Kolontai ending that report from Dina Newman.